Miss C. Miller became editor in chief of Ebony Magazine, the country's oldest and most popular African American monthly publication, in April 2014. The best selling author and award winning journalist previously helmed its sister publication, Jet Magazine, for three years, during which time her vision of revamping the iconic 62 year old brand was realized with the, mag with the magazine's first and only successful cover to cover redesign, new website launch improved social media presence and consistent media coverage of buzzworthy stories featured in its pages. An English major graduate from Florida A&M University, Miller began her writing career at Honey Magazine, where she grew from intern to entertainment editor. She later became an associate relationship editor at Jane Magazine and an editor-in-chief of Sex Magazine. In addition to, to snagging the top spot at Ebony, one of Miller's five novels has been made into a movie for the Lifetime Network. With this ring, based on the vow which Miller co-wrote with Deneen Milner and Angela Burt Murray, will star Jill Scott, Eve, and Regina Hall, and is produced by Gabrielle Union and Tracy Evans. With this ring is currently being shown on Lifetime. Ladies and gentlemen, Thank you. That's really nice. Claflin University. My name is Angel Anderson and I am currently a junior majoring in mass communications with a concentration in digital media and public relations. And I am Tammy White, sophomore mass communications major with a concentration in public relations. And today we're here with the editor-in-chief of Ebony Magazine, Mitzi Miller. Good morning. We will begin today with our first question. So Mitzi, who is the most influential person in your life and how have they influenced you? You know, I hate to be cliche, but the most influential person is definitely my mom. Um, we have had our ups and downs like any mother-daughter, but throughout my entire life, my mom has always encouraged me to take risks and to always do my best. She was never afraid of failure and never punished me for failure. It was more the idea of if you don't try, you're not living up to your potential, and that was the most disappointing thing to her. How far do you think the African American culture has come, and how does, how does Ebony Magazine contribute to this change? Well, I think the African American culture has constantly changing, constantly evolving, just like the American culture. We are a part of the American fabric. Um, and Ebony continues in its role, what it's done traditionally and continues to do so well, chronicling the changes in our culture, chronicling the news that affects us and how it inspires growth and development. Do you believe that your background in culture has helped mold you into the person you are today? Do I believe my background in culture or my in culture? Okay, so my background and culture. So absolutely, I'm the parent of two immigrants. I'm first generation American. I'm the first um, person in my immediate family to go to college. So I think that that inherently makes me uh, a double A personality. I'm always striving to be better, striving to top the list, striving to do a little bit more, um, always looking to prove myself. And then I think having made the decision to go to an HBCU as well, I attended Florida a University, just cemented the fact that I'm definitely one of those people that doesn't like to be told no, that don't see it necessarily as a deterrent, but rather as a challenge to rise to greatness. Out of all your accolades, which one is the most significant to you? Hmm, honestly, being a good daughter. Family is so important to me. Um, at the end of the day, I firmly believe that people will vaguely kind of sort of remember what you did for a living, but they will absolutely remember how you made them feel and the impression you left on them. I live by the motto, impact over intent. It's not always what you're thinking, it's how it's received. So when I hear my parents speak highly of me or my family or even my friends just say I'm a good friend, that matters the most. What is an example of a typical day as the editor of Ebony Magazine? <laughs> there is absolutely no typical day. Every day is different. Um, it just depends what part of the production period and what time of the year it is. Um, some days I am in the office 12 plus hours a day. I start at home at 8 o'clock and I don't get back to my house probably until 1 in the morning. That's when we're in production trying to get an issue out. Other days I'm traveling, 
Um, I've got photo shoots. Um, and then some days like today, I'm here talking with people and sharing my experiences and helping to encourage people to follow their own passion. I see that you were at Jet Magazine for mm -hmm. years prior to coming to Epity Magazine. Yes. Why did you all decide to publish the magazine online after 62 years of it being printed? I think that that was really a financial decision. I think the industry as a whole is moving, the majority are moving towards digital. So you have to make smart business decisions even when there's a lot of emotion based in it. And also, that is Mr. Johnson's vision for JET. It was supposed to get the news out the very fastest, hence the name JET. Um, and we are, were competing as a print publication with online and failing. No matter how great our information was, it really didn't matter. We were still late. So in order to keep his vision going and update it and keep it current, going digital made absolute sense. Do you think that there is a lack of African-American representation when it comes to leadership roles in the field of mass communications? I think there's probably um, a lack of diversity and African-American representation in every professional field. Um, definitely, we feel it the most in media because that's what that's the vehicle responsible for getting messaging out about how we feel about current events and different world, you know, things that happen in the world. Um, I certainly would love to see more African American leadership. I feel extremely blessed to work at an African American country, a company rather. Um, I work under two wonderful women, Desiree Rogers and Linda Johnson Rice, and it, there's nothing like it. It's like people comparing a PWI um, undergrad experience to an HBCU experience. Both are wonderful educations, but there's just that much more. There's that bonus when you're in a community of caring people that look like you. What are your resources and or other outlets that you use to make the magazine more appealing to this generation? Well, I think that the magazine is kind of a mainstay and it's one of those like legacy items that people will look at and always reach for and touch and look. I use a lot of imagery. We use a lot of, we try to focus on pushing current event stories forward in the print publication. But we also work hand in hand with our website, ebony.com, to make sure that we're reaching people on social media and getting their immediate input on, and feedback on what we're doing. How has digital convergence impacted your business? I think it's just made it better. I know a lot of people are scared about digital cannibalizing print, but I personally feel that there's always going to be a place for it. There's always going to be an audience of people that want a magazine and pages to turn, that whose lifestyle lends itself to sitting down on a Sunday and spending two to three hours flipping through a book. Um, so I think that now I get to reach those people. I also get to reach the people that are on the fly and on their mobile devices. So it actually, Makes, completes a 360 experience. What is one thing that you wish you would have known during college that you know now? I wish I would have known to go to spring break more frequently. I wish I would have known to go to Mardi Gras. Um, I spend a lot of time uh, like on campus, going to class, trying to be you know a straight A student. And <clears throat> in retrospect, we're all at the same place. We're all, you know, an undergrad degree is an undergrad degree out, at the, out in the marketplace. So I think that it is so important to be present in your life and to have um, a balance. I still struggle with it today. I'm like a workaholic. And, but at least I can say to myself, okay, Mitzi, you have to stop. You have to go see your friends now. You have to find time to call your mom, call your dad, check in with your sister. I think when you're in college, you sort of either binge one way or another. And so I wish I had had more balance. If you had the opportunity to switch positions with an editor of another major magazine, who would it be and why? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's challenging because, um, I mean, for me, Ebony is, this is where I want it to be. Sometimes I think about Essence, but I love being able to speak to men and women. I um, have always been a big fan of men's magazines, so perhaps GQ. That was my little secret favorite there. Um, but honestly, I think Ebony's is the bee, I think Ebony is the bee's knees. So I'm happy where I am. How do you think that your work has stood out and has set you apart from your competition? You know, I think the thing that uh, people know 
most distinctly about me is my voice. Um, I tend to lean towards very conversational articles and conversation. I just think that it's easier for people to relate when we're all speaking a very simple, common, easy language. So <clears throat> I think under me, Ebony definitely is more gender balanced. There's a lot more articles that are geared towards men and it's also very conversational. I want it to be, feel more like water cooler feel. You know, something you read in the magazine, you should definitely go on and tell two to three friends about it. So that not only do they look out for the magazine, but they are now f more informed. If Ebony Magazine decided to broaden their audience, do you believe that it will take away from the African American culture and overall vision of Ebony? No, not at all. I think that, especially nowadays, everyone's already watching and studying the African American culture. I think that we don't, we have to do very little for people to want to imitate us. So by broadening, we're just opening our arms to people that are peeping anyway. Are you satisfied with the overall state of Ebony Magazine? I'm never 100% satisfied with anything. I'm always one of those people that think that there can be improvements and I think there's always room for growth. I think that that's what keeps me getting up every day and working hard. Um, that's what makes the adventure exciting. At the point where you feel like, oh no, we're good enough, you're now complacent and you're probably on your way to being outdated. If there is anything that you would change about Ebony, what would it be and why? If I could change anything about Ebony, I would love to have more videos associated with our in-book. Right now we do about three to four per issue. Like you can, we have the augmented reality feature where you can put your phone over the pages and the videos will pop up. And I would love to do, be able to do more of those. Because again, I think the integration, the digital integration into the print publication is what keeps it alive and fresh. What would you say has been your biggest challenge in being editor-in-chief? Um, I think my biggest challenge in being editor-in-chief is managing my own personal expectations and understanding that what's good for Mitzi is for Mitzi, but what's good for the brand is good for the brand. So whereas I personally have no problem with a 13-hour day, I had to take a step back and think about what was best for the team and make sure that I put that first. Because at the end of the day, I'm only as strong as my team is supportive of me and believes in my mission. And I think that that's really an important part of my job is being a good leader, someone that people feel like they can communicate with, someone that they trust their vision, and someone that they feel like I'd get behind and I'd have her back regardless of what's going on. Considering all of the hate crime and police brutality that has taken place in America over the past year, what is Ebony Magazine doing to address this issue? Well, we're always staying on top of current events. Anything that affects the African American community, we're reporting on it. Um, but re most recently, our December issue was dedicated to this issue of race. Normally, the December issue is the Power 100 issue and devoted to the person who has made the biggest splash in the news, the entertainer or the politician. But this year, I took a different approach because I felt like the one constant conversation that we'd been having the entire year of 2014 was about race and all these incidences. And so we looked at it from a statistical standpoint. We removed the majority of the emotion because there's always some emotion when it has to do with self and community. And we just looked at where we are as African Americans in this country compared to white people in this country, compared to Latinas and Asians and just compared so that it is very black and white. You can, in, there, you can only interpret numbers the way they are. And so that we want to do more of that kind of reporting. We want to do more town halls and get out there and talk to the community to hear what you, not only you think about what we're doing, but what matters to you. So do you believe that um, Ebony Magazine could be used to possibly change how African Americans are viewed in society? I think that Ebony is definitely a vehicle for conversation. That's the purpose of the publication, making sure that there's a platform for our stories to be told authentically um, and in a timely fashion to everybody the way we want them to be heard. I mean, there's so much spin in media today. It's very few places that you can go to hear your side of the story the way you want it told, not like with someone in the background waving that you're like, really? You always find that person to interview. Like, no, we do our due diligence and we come up with the good stuff to make sure that we're putting the best light in our community at all times. Well, what is the next goal for every magazine? The next goal, do we stop having goals? I mean, <laughs> you know, I think, 
uh, I really I personally really enjoy news stories so we're looking to do more investigative reporting staying on top of c current events um, trying to get more a-listers on our covers we did really good in 2014 I was able to get Pharrell that was his first ebony cover would love to get Jay-Z and Beyonce back on I mean just in terms of entertainment these are history makers we can't deny what they're doing would love to get some of black Hollywood in because we're doing a lot there as well um, lifestyle 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 I think ebony speaks to a very aspirational audience people that are definitely continually trying to live their best life every single day and even if it doesn't work today we get up tomorrow and start again so I want to continue to be the voice and a resource for that those individuals as an african-american woman were there any challenges that you had to overcome as you progressed in your career you know I have to tell you I have been very blessed I um, it was it was an unconventional start to my career I started as a unpaid 25 year old intern but once I got in I started at Vanguard Media which was a publishing company an African-American owned publishing company run by an HBCU grad um, he went to FAMU for King, Keith Kling Scales he started Vibe Media as well um, from there I went and I worked a couple years in mainstream and I think those were difficult years obviously um, kind of not because anyone was un no one was making uncomfortable for me but it was that learning curve of I know how to speak to my community. I know how to speak to my peers. Now I'm speaking to those outside of my community, but no one was ever overtly obnoxious or made anything difficult. They were just l lumps and bumps, but they're the normal. I've been pretty blessed. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you for your time, Ms. Miller. Again, I am Angel Anderson. And I'm Tammy White. And thank you for tuning in. Thank you so much. Okay.